tolerate him because if it wasn't him, there wouldn't be her. And if it wasn't her, we wouldn't be here. And if we were here, there wouldn't be a reason for us to praise because the rock could do it. But we ain't gonna let no rock take our place. Scripture, amen, reading, amen, by our elder Smith, amen, followed by prayer by our pastor, Annette Hawkins, amen, hallelujah, glory to God, amen. Thank you, 
O oh God, for the woman of God. We come to celebrate this. Amen. We thank you, O oh God, for our pastor, Dr. Hurley, in yes. For the many years, 35 plus years that she stood in the way, O oh God. O oh God, shepherd in your people, O oh God. Father, we ask, O oh God, that you continue to bless her even the more, O oh God. Strengthen her on the good, O oh God. Father, she stood in the gap for many of us, O oh God. And Father, we thank you. Now continue, O oh God, to bless you. Pour out your spirit upon her even the more, O oh God. So that as she stands and preaches and teaches your word, O oh God, we, your people, O oh God, will heed your word and adhere, O oh God, to what thus said the Lord. Father, we thank you, O oh God, for her life. Continue to see her, O oh God. Cover in your blood, O oh God. She in your mercy. Undergird her, O oh God. Yes. And let her keep looking to the hills from where it's coming her head. Knowing, O oh God, that her head comes from you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, O oh God, for our bishop, David James, O oh God. Yes. Thank him and continue to keep him, O oh God. Yes. Open doors of opportunity yes. for him, O oh God. And even as he stands with our apostle to deliver your word, O oh God. Father, let me ask, O oh God, that you even the more. So Father, right now we are thanking you for each and every body in the house of God. Especially the woman of God who is going to bring the word of God. Our pastor Natalia Hillwood. Father, hide her behind the cross. Let her stand flat footed and say what thus be the Lord. Let her not fear the face of man, but let us say, oh God, what will deliver, heal, set free. Whatever is needed in this house, oh God, we thank you, oh God, that it will be delivered today in the name of Jesus. Father, we invite you to take a seat in our presence. To say you inhabit the presence of your people. Father, we thank you for your presence. And as we lift up, oh God, the sounds of praise, oh God, we thank you for your presence in our midst. Thank you, Lord. Come on, my soul. something that definitely will work for you. Amen. It's something called the blood of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. And when we think about the blood of Jesus, amen, we have our life in the blood. Hallelujah. We're going to do our blood medley at this time as the praise and worship team comes back. Amen. And I ask that you'll join with them and participate. Amen. This is not a concert. <laughs> Hallelujah. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood.
to your feet and receive none other than our Bishop William Stinson, amen, who is coming to welcome us, amen, praise God, and come to your feet and receive him, amen, Bishop William Stinson Sr. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. You may be seated. Amen. We honor the Lord. Amen. On this auspicious occasion, as we honor our overseer, Chief Apostle, Apostle Hurley Phil Streeter, yes. on their Shepherd's Week. That was a good place to put your hands together. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, we're going to try it again. We're going to do it again. Amen. We honor the Lord Jesus. And I just believe that you love her so much so until you will keep her in your prayers always, amen. as I do, amen. because she is worthy, amen, to amen. stand and to receive this honor today. Why don't you just give a big hand right now? Come on, come on, give a big hand. Hey, I just thank God for her spirit. Praise God. And some of you think she fusses a lot, but uh, she loves you a lot. That's right. Amen. Amen. And I just thank the Lord that the Lord has blessed her and that I have so much to just be a part of her ministry in some way or some fashion. 
And I just thank the Lord, and I just pray for her that the Lord will give her longevity and that you will continue to undergird her in your prayers. May God bless you. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Pastor. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We praise God for Pastor MacArthur. Amen. And Apostle, they've been together the whole 30-some years. Amen. Praise God. 40-something years. Amen. Before she was even in ministry. Amen. Before she started, before God called her. Our next uh, person we're going to bring to reflect some words is the Apostle Cornell from New York. Amen. Stand and receive her in Jesus' name. Everybody. Praise, Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. We give God thanks and honor for bringing us here this afternoon to help you celebrate your week. Amen. You know that we love you. I can't say that I knew you as long as the other people knew you, but I'm glad that God brought you into Amen. my life. We don't talk a lot on the phone, but whenever we meet each other, we know that we are friends. Because friends don't have to talk on the phone all the time. And if I need her, and then she'll be there for me. She knows that she needs me. She'll be there for me. We continue to celebrate her great ministry, I mean, that God has called her to do, which she does adequately. And I know everyone knows Dr. Ho, she's hard on you, but that's the role of an apostle. Yes, we just right. can't help it. We <laughs> just got that you can't help it. But I know that they're blessed. Like yes. my people tell me, they're blessed. Amen. Amen. Yes. The Lord has yes. got you today. Yes. 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 By the time you get home, the Holy Spirit be with you. You're back again saying, yes. thank you, yes. Papa. Yes. <laughs> so we thank you for the work that you're doing here. Yes. And yes. even in other places, may God continue to keep you. Doesn't she look beautiful? Yes. 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 I want you to stand this afternoon. Amen. 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 We just want to apologize for Thank being late you. because usually we are not that late, but we are here. Amen. Amen. So we come to you on behalf of Team Time, all our ministers, elders, amen, deacons, deaconesses, just everyone. We want to say God bless you and may you live many, many years continue doing the same thing you've been doing in the same way. In Jesus' name and all God's people say. Amen. Pastor of Overcoming Faith. Elder Ivy. Amen. Come on up. Amen. Speaking of come on up. Amen. The next one to reflect will be our Bishop Tuga. Amen. Amen. Right, come on, stand and receive him in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Certainly we honor the Lord who is the head of my life and to this wonderful honoree, uh, over, uh, Apostle Hurley Streeter. Yes. It's a privilege to be here. I'm, my voice has been out all week and uh, going through with my throat. I don't have the coronavirus. Yeah. There's something going on with my throat. Don't worry about it. We saved. He, he told me he wouldn't put diseases that he put on the Egyptians on me. So I'm not worried about it. Amen. Hallelujah. But, man, certainly we thank God for this celebration, and I'm glad to be here while she's still alive. Amen. Amen. To celebrate uh, while she still is here and able to hear our kind words. I want to say, I, I came here, I moved to Stanford in uh, 2018, the end of 2018, and I did not know her personally, uh, even though she knew my father, I did not know her personally, and uh, she was sitting at a table. Uh, we were at a banquet together, and she was sitting at the same table as I was. And uh, I just, you know, saw her sitting there, and you know, we spoke and whatever. And uh, a couple weeks later, I was in Alme, and uh, she happened to walk in, and I said, Apostle! And she looked, and she said, hey, and I told her who I was, and I told her I was here in Stanford, and uh, and she said, okay, we were talking. And at that time, I didn't have a car. My car had caught on fire, mm -hmm. and I didn't have a car, so I was getting on the train. Thank God for uh, the New York City metropolitan area. You can get where you got to get to. Right? Hallelujah. So I get right on that Metro North train to the city and come back here and then walk home. I wasn't too far from the train. 
And uh, she said to me, I had purchased something. She said, well, if you uh, wait, I'll drive you home. And I said, oh, praise the Lord, thank you. And uh, she drove me home, and then she went in the car we're talking, and she, I told her I was going to go back to the train because I had to go pick my son up. And she said, well, I'll wait for you. Praise God. And she waited for me after I took my stuff home, and then she drove me back down to the Metro North train station so I could go into the city to pick my son up. And that is the love of God. Yes, yes it is. Because there's a lot of people that would have saw you in need and said, all right, God bless you. That was the love of God. And certainly, amen, it's wonderful when you have someone that has the love of God in them. Especially leading, because you need the love of God to lead God's people. you got to have the love of God. Because they'll make you want to say some things. And they'll make you want to do some things. But the love of God overshadows and overtakes and leads us. So we thank God. Amen. I, I'm here. I'm here every Sunday morning at 8 o'clock playing yes, yes. here. And we Jesus is Lord. Yes, Lord. I have to leave. I got to go to Harlem and play. I'll be there at 11. Amen. And I count not Robert to come back. And I watched her. As I sit over there, I watched her. As she, she has a spirit of excellence. Yes. She, wants, she yes. wants God's people yes. Yes. to be excellent in praise and excellent yes. in worship. Yes. And I watch her, and sometimes I want to say something to us. It's being so hard on the people. <laughs> Amen. But sometimes the people need it. <laughs> because I'm going to tell you something about Israel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Sometimes they need it. So we just, we praise God for her. Amen. Amen. And thank God. We're just glad to be here. Just to say that we love you. We appreciate you. And we thank God for you. And may the Lord bless you with many more years. Yeah. That was a great testimony, yeah, amen, of, yeah. of, of her character, amen. Mm -hmm. of who she really is, amen. and, you know, that hard and this and that. That's called discipline. Amen. That's, yeah. that's, that's called, right. you know, that's why kids today act all crazy, because uh -huh. nobody will stand yeah. and take a stand yeah. and tell them what yeah. is right yeah. and not back down from it. Right. Right. Amen. Everybody want to be friends with their kids uh -huh. instead of be parents to their kids. Right. The teachers uh -huh. are not the parents. Right. We're the parents. Right. Amen. So we have to take a stand. Well, we are her children. Right. So if she didn't discipline us, it means she don't love us. Yeah. That's Bible. That's yeah. biblical. Yes, anyway, I didn't preach. Anyway, next is, uh, <laughs> before we have uh, 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 our next person coming, she is uh, a former Jesus' Lord herself, amen? So she knows exactly what I'm talking about. Exactly. That would be none other than our elder, Lawanda. Wow. Praise the Lord, everybody. Right. Praise the Lord, everybody. Right. It is such a privilege and an honor to be here. I'm not scared of Dave. We still fight like brothers and sisters. As a matter of fact, I body checked them coming in. <laughs> but I'm, I'm so excited to be here. And I, I just want to let Apostle Streeter know I love you so much. She got me. I just wanted to stay in the back with my sneakers on. And just be here, amen, just to show my love for you. But I love you. I love you. She's my mother in the Lord. She birthed me in the spirit. I got the Holy Ghost right here at Jesus' Lord. Glory to God. And I just want to encourage you to keep on keeping on. I want you to know that your fruit still remains. Your fruit remains. Glory to God. And that is a testament to who you are, the woman of God that you are, all that you've taught us. And Pastor Tuga, you are absolutely right. I was able to operate in the spirit of excellence because I learned it here. Amen. Glory to God. And so I just want you to know I love you. I cherish you. I'm always here. And I'm still that elder that carried a bat for you. Amen. Well, praise God. We praise God for the words of expression. We may have some a little later. Amen. tonight, amen, to celebrate this great woman awesome. of God. Would y'all clap for her just one more time? Celebrate.
king of our lives, God. And we call you your majesty. Come on, just stand to your feet before we receive the woman of God. Come on, stay in your majesty. Come on, can we just call our Lord the majesty of our lives on tonight? Come on, just say your majesty. One more time. to honor the Lord just once again for Apostle Herlene Phil Streeter, amen, the honoree on this evening, amen, for 35 years of service. Listen, y'all got to be better now. I said 35 years. Now, I'm not going to take up too much time, but we got to celebrate that. Because none of us know we're going to be able to do 35 years of anything. Amen. And since these 35 years have been accomplished and we are blessed because of it, we certainly honor the Lord and give God praise. Amen. In this house, I certainly want to honor the Lord also uh, for Bishop uh, James. Amen. God bless you, man of God. Amen. To Pastor MacArthur. God bless you. To my brother, Elder Too Good. God bless you. To Pastor Apostle Cornell. Amen. God bless you. Pastor Kathy Whitfield. Amen. God bless you. Amen. And I certainly want to honor the Lord. Amen. For God's man servant. Amen. Prophet, God bless you on this evening. I thank God for uh, uh, Overseer Stinson. Amen. I hope I got everybody's title right. Please forgive me uh, if, I, if I didn't get that right. But I also want to honor the Lord. Amen. For Elder LaWanda Clark. Amen. Amen. Andre Prince. Amen. There is the calendar. Minister Garrison in the back. Would you wave your hand? Amen. Elder Hunt is here in the back also. God bless you. Amen. And to the bar, thank you for getting on the road with me. A portion of the bar that's here on this evening. Amen. Those of you that have your Bibles, let's go to the word of the Lord. Is that all right? Somebody put me on a timer. Amen. I certainly honor the Lord also. I got half of my twins here. Got one half here. Amen. Micah. Micah's the church boy. He's going to church. That other one, we got to pray for you. Jesus. We got to pray for that other one. But Micah's going to church. Amen. Micah is, is he's going to church. Amen. Those of you that have your Bibles, amen. Turn with me to the book of Exodus. Amen. And Clark has me on the timer. I promise I will stick to my time. Amen. Amen. I'm going to stick to my time. Amen. Amen. Exodus chapter 9, uh, beginning at verse number 1. When you have it, please signify by saying, Amen. Amen. And the word of the Lord reads, Then the Lord said unto Moses, Go into Pharaoh and tell him, Thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews, let my people go that they may serve me. For if thou refuse to let them go and will hold them still, and behold, or behold, the hand of the Lord is upon the cattle which is in the field, upon the horses, upon the asses, upon the camels, upon the oxen, and upon the sheep. There shall be a very grievous rain, and the Lord shall sever between the cattle of Israel and the cattle of Egypt, and there shall nothing die of all that is that is the children of Israel's and the Lord appointed a set time somebody say a set time saying tomorrow the Lord shall do this thing in the land and the Lord did that thing on the morrow and the cattle of Egypt died but the cattle of the children of Israel died not one and Pharaoh sent, and behold, there was not one of the cattle of the Israelites dead, for the heart of Pharaoh was hardened, and he did not let the people go. Father, we thank you now for this red word. God, we pray this word be 
sanctified in our hearts that we might live, grow, and mature thereby. I pray now that you would hide me behind the cross, that your people here would hear a word from you, God, and that you would speak to our hearts and mind, that we would be the stronger, the better, the wiser, and the more mature believer. And the people of God put their Bibles down, begin to clap their hands, open their mouths, and say thanks be unto God. Come on, would you give God praise right where you are? presence of the Lord. Amen. Certainly I read to you out of this book of Exodus. Amen. And if I had just a topic early, somebody say minds will live. Minds will live. Uh, just look up and down your row and say neighbor minds is going to live. Minds. So just for the next maybe 20 to 25 minutes, I want you to be encouraged that yours will live. Amen. That yours is going to thrive. It's not just going to live. Tell somebody it's going to thrive. It's, it's going to be everything that God has called it to be. And not only is mine going to live, but look at somebody and say, I'm going to live. And so when I read to you here, uh, you certainly understand and you know the story uh, where the children of Israel, amen, are held captive and they are in bondage. And here now, uh, the, uh, Moses is on the scene and Moses has a great assignment. Moses has a great assignment. And for many of us, God has given each and every one of us an assignment. And we like to beat up on those in the Bible that we think have not accomplished what God has called them to do because in hindsight, 2020, is always better and so we are able to dissect and we have, uh, have been able to go through the text and find out how and why people made mistakes but how many of us understand God has called us to do something and there are some things that we must get done no matter what the price looks like it must be to be paid but there are some things that we've got to get done and so Moses here he has got to get this assignment done because the Lord has called him to lead the Lord has put him out front with all of his, his speech impediment and with all of his uh, low self-esteem perhaps and all of the things that he's got to deal with. But look at somebody and say, when God has called you out, you got to come out. When God has put you in the forefront, you got to be in the forefront. When God has set you apart from everybody else, your neighbor might not understand, but you got to do what God has called you to do. Not only do you have to do what he's called you to do, somehow, some way he's going to help you be what he's called you to be. Somebody just tap yourself and say, I will be what God has called me to be. And so now Moses finds himself in a precarious situation because uh, uh, there are a lot that is going on and he's dealing with God's people uh, who are not always as cooperative uh, as you would like them to be. They don't always follow instruction. Uh, I had a few people that came to me and said, Pastor, can you help me with X, Y, and Z? And unfortunately, I cannot give you wisdom about this matter because you didn't consult God in the beginning. Now, what we will do is we're going to pray about it uh, because we believe that God can and God will. But it would behoove you that any decision that you make when you know that you are called of God, that you ask of the Lord first, that you inquire of the Lord, that you beseech the Lord, and then tell somebody, wait on God to answer. Because what I found out is we don't mind praying to God and we don't mind asking God but we don't want to wait on God and sometimes you've got to wait for the Lord to move somebody say in the appointed time what I love about this particular passage is that the Bible says that God is going to do something on the morrow it says at a specific time something is got to happen you ought to look at your neighbor and say neighbor at a specific time, something has got to happen. It's got to happen for my good. I've got to be increased in some way. God has got to move on my behalf. Anybody been praying about a few things and you just believe that after a while, something has got to happen. I was praying to the Lord the other day and I said, God, something's got to break concerning this matter. Concerning this situation, but Lord, I understand if you don't move, 
Tell somebody it must happen. Do I have anybody that believes strongly that you are in the thick of it now and it's just the same distance to go forward as it is to go backward? And I don't know about you, but I already put his name on the line. I already called his name. I already pronounced and declared a thing. show up. And guess what, church? I'm not tired of waiting. Because if God put me in it, tell your neighbor he's going to get me out of it. Time is an important thing because what you got to understand about time is that you never get it back. Ah, you never get it back. I was sitting couch last night and I was hanging out with the boys and, and, and my cell phone began to ring uh, and I picked up the phone and looked at the name and put the phone back down uh, because there are some people uh, that just want to waste your time. Uh, there are some people uh, that just want to do a whole lot of talking uh, but they really not listening. Uh, there are some people uh, that no matter how much time you give them, uh, they never do the right thing. Uh, and so that some people just like talking I like our kind of people we do a lot of talking and a little acting and so I said I'm not going to waste my time with another silly question from somebody that really don't want to be any better somebody that don't want to grow from where they are and some of us have got to learn that there's some people around us who are just wasting I promise you, whatever crisis they're in, they will lean on you until you've got nothing left. And the minute you turn your back, the minute you're tired, the minute you're not available, they will run to the next person. And so I want you to know that time is an essential thing. The Bible says that there is a time for everything. There's a time to laugh. There's a time to weep. There's a time to mourn. And I want you to understand this. You gotta be careful with your time. Because Ecclesiastes tells us that time and chance, they're gonna happen to everybody. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, hold on just a little while longer. Because you will get the right time. And you will get the right chance at the right time.
assignment. Uh, and Moses doesn't have all the pieces in the beginning. But Moses understands uh, that I got to do what God told me to do uh, in the space of time uh, that he told me to do it. Uh, because most of us want to do it when we feel like doing it. Most of us want to do it when we get good and ready to do it. Uh, most of us want to do it when we got the strength to do it. Uh, but how many of you know when God tells you to do a thing, uh, it would behoove you to get up and do it. Uh, it would behoove you uh, to move from your place of comfort uh, and your place of familiarity uh, and to launch out in the place where God has called you to be. Uh, why? Because sometimes uh, when you sit around a thing too long, uh, you can't see the potential of a thing. Uh, and every now and then, uh, you need to get out of a thing uh, so you can see it from a different perspective. Uh, you need to move your chair uh, and you need to move your seat. Uh, and every now and then, uh, you need to stop sitting in the same row in church. Uh, every now and then, uh, you ought to get up from where you are uh, and say, I've got to try something new. Uh, I've got to be something different. Uh, not that you got to be a chameleon, uh, but every now and then, uh, look at your neighbor uh, and say, neighbor, uh, I'm going to try something different. Uh, I'm going to try something different. Uh, somebody shout and give a prayer. God's plan. That, that's perfect. That one is on. Our plans don't look like God's plans. And what we desire to do does not look like uh, 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 it doesn't always look like what, what God has called us to do. And so every now and then uh, you got to learn to come out of yourself uh, because what we do uh, is we put labels on each other. Uh, we put job descriptions on each other. Uh, we put job duties on each other. Uh, we tell each other how we should dance, how we should praise, uh, how we should respond what we should look like, how we should act, how we should talk. But every now and then, I come to understand that I've got to do this God's way. Every now and then, God will shake you just to get your attention. Every now and then, God will send a wave. God will send a wind just to get the people's attention. I have no doubt about it that all of this coronavirus business is to let the people know once again Ah, uh, who God is. And I am so grateful that I'm covered under the blood. I'm so grateful. You see, when you serve God right, ah, uh, heaven belongs to you. And you really don't care. I heard a preacher say, either the answer is yes or yes. When you serve God, the answer is either yes or is yes. Might not look like what you want it to. Tell somebody, when you serve in his time. Oh yes I am. I'm still working in his time because God has sovereign control over time and the Lord knows what and the Lord knows when. He knows how and he knows how much. And so whatever the enemy is trying, tell somebody I'm still on the Lord's time. The Bible says, here let me, let me, let me hurry up. The Bible says that the Lord says to Moses, he says you got to go into Pharaoh and, and I can just imagine that and once again, he's got to go into Pharaoh, uh, who has already denied his request, uh, who has already tried to manipulate his request, uh, who has already been deceitful. Uh, and the truth of the matter is, uh, at the end of the day, he's Moses and he's Pharaoh. Uh, and every now and then, uh, we let these titles and these positions uh, uh, of the ungodly uh, scare us from who we really are. Uh, because they have the title uh, and they got the seat at the table. Uh, but I come to understand uh, that God power and authority uh, trumps who's sitting at the table. And so every now and then, uh, you got to forget about titles uh, and you got to forget about who these people are uh, because I've got a boss uh, that I work for. Uh, but every now and then, uh, she calls me in her office uh, and she is a, a, a world-renowned neuroscientist. Uh, but every now and then, uh, 
she calls this little old girl from the Southfield Village Projects up in her office to inquire as to what she should do concerning matters. And I just come to let somebody know that your little light is shining. Tell somebody when I live right, my light is going to shine. When I do right, my light is going to shine. distract him from God's assignment and every now and then we think people in positions of authority make them special the truth of the matter is time and chance just lined up for them but I come in the authority and in the power of God and here now Moses has got to understand never mind his title but consider your authority look at your neighbor and them and say, neighbor, never mind their authority, but consider your power, consider your anointing, consider the revelation that God has given you, consider your walk with Christ. And so now here, Moses goes to Pharaoh and he says to Pharaoh that you got to let the people go, that they may serve God. He said, don't just let them go for them to and still fool up with the devil but when he lets you go you got to be free enough to serve him look at your neighbor and say neighbor God is about to do something great in the first quarter of the year but you better get ready to serve him and to serve him well be Pray that the 
Lord release you so that you can serve him. Pray that you don't bring your pettiness into the church. Because somebody didn't speak to you or somebody walked by you or somebody was busy or somebody was trying to get to the altar. But it's always about you. Pray this time. And Lord, I pray you release me and I pray that you you be the bondage breaker that you are so that I may serve you. I wonder what kind of results we could get. We said, Lord, I need to be free to serve you. Lord, I need to be free to evangelize. Lord, I need to be free to do outreach. Lord, I need to be free to tell a dying world to the utmost Jesus say. I gotta hurry up. Bible says that Moses had an assignment and he had to go and he had to say, let my people go that they may serve me. And if you refuse to let them go, I promise I'm almost finished. Give me about 10 minutes. If you refuse to let them go uh, 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 and you continue to hold them, uh, behold the hand of the Lord which will be upon thy cattle which is in the field. Somebody say the ones of the field because the ones of the field are the ones that produce. The ones of the field are the things that make you rich. The ones out in the field. Not talking about the ones we see later for a burnt sacrifice. And so then and people could uh, wonder uh, how is it that everything died but then there's there, there's animals left for a burnt sacrifice we're talking about the ones of the field that are productive the ones that make you rich the ones that pay the bills the one that feeds you says if you don't let them go Pharaoh because you've been playing with my people uh, they told you that they needed to go out and they needed to uh, go in the wilderness three days journey and they needed to do a uh, uh, send up sacrifices to me they told you what is required uh, uh, for them to be who they are unto me because they are my people and sometimes you got to understand though you be in bondage you still belong to God uh, because some of this stuff we entered into willingly uh, and some of this stuff we entered into with warnings uh, uh, that warnings will come before the destruction of a thing uh, but we did it anyway uh, and so what you got to understand uh, is that though you might be in a tight spot uh, tell somebody I'm still God's anointed uh, do I have a witness anywhere in the building uh, that says I might be in a jam uh, but I'm still God's woman I might be in the middle, in the thick of a thing, but make no mistake about it. I know who I am, and I know whose I am. Make no mistake about it. I came out of worse than this, and watch God turn this thing around. Somebody say, for my good. And so here now, it says that the cattle of the field, ah, the cattle of the field now, the hand of the Lord will be upon them, and it will be very grievous for you and them, and for your people. And the Bible says that the Lord shall sever between the cattle of Israel and the cattle of Egypt. And nothing shall die that belongs to the children of Israel. And so when we look up later it says here that the Lord even went beyond that because the Lord is specific and you ought to tell somebody they better leave me alone. Ah, the enemy is riding you but they better leave you alone if they know what's best for them. You ought to look at somebody early and say, God is crazy about me. Tell your neighbor, you ought to look up and down the whole road and say, God is crazy about me. He will mess somebody up over me. You better get out of my way. You better keep my name out of your mouth because I am somebody to the Lord. He's crazy about me. He gets ridiculous about me. You ain't got to worry about it, Pastor. You ain't got to worry about it, Apostle. Because the Lord is crazy about you. He will set somebody down. He will destroy somebody. He will move somebody. He will let somebody fall to their own devices. Not to worry. Because God is crazy about you. Ain't no way in the world you can serve him 35 years and God not be crazy about you. Ain't no way in the world you can believe him 35 years and he not be crazy about you. Somebody bless God. I gotta hurry up, I gotta hurry up, listen. And so he says now that the Lord has appointed.
appointed a set time, uh, saying tomorrow uh, the Lord shall do this thing. Uh, the, tomorrow the Lord shall do this thing. Uh, and then the Bible says, uh, on the morrow he dealt with him. Uh, let me just say this. Uh, I know that the enemy is riding some of us. Uh, and I know that sometimes uh, we got to come to church uh, and put on a good face. Uh, because you don't know who to trust. Uh, no more in the house of God. Uh, you can't tell the whole story. Uh, because sometimes you just got to wait on God. Uh, even when your heart is overwhelmed. Uh, when your mind is wrapped. Uh, and you can't even sleep peacefully at night. Uh, every now and then. Uh, tell somebody you got to take that thing to the Lord. Uh, every now and then. Uh, you can't share all the details. Uh, uh, you can't testify about everything. Uh, because the enemy is so cunning. Uh, and he's so crafty. Uh, he'll use your testimony against you. Uh, uh, two months later. Uh, by those that you testified to. Uh, and so you got to be real careful. Uh, you testified that the money came in the mail. Uh, all of a sudden you get in sympathy notes. Uh, all of a sudden you get in people. Uh, uh, trying to kiss up to you. Uh, every now and then. Uh, you can't tell the whole testimony. Uh, you wanted to tell somebody. Uh, what God brought you out of. Uh, I had somebody in the church. Uh, that testified too soon. Uh, that the Lord brought them out of homosexuality. Uh, but the truth of the matter is. Uh, they had not been tempted in a while. Uh, they had not been tempted in a while. Uh, and they're testifying. Uh, and I'm holding my head. Uh, like it's too soon. Uh, you ain't been delivered yet. Uh, you see it's something versus not being tempted. Uh, and being delivered. Uh, tell somebody that's two different things. Uh, and so now. Uh, uh, this person began to watch them. Uh, from across the room. Uh, and the minute they had a bad day. Uh, the minute they had a bad moment. Uh, here they come. Uh, making passes at them. Uh, telling them how good they look. Uh, telling them what they look like in their dress. Uh, the devil is a liar. Uh, let me tell you this. Uh, the enemy walks in our churches. Uh, every single week. Uh, the enemy opens the door. Uh, the enemy sits you in your seat. Uh, and so you got to be careful. Uh, what you say and how you do it. But what we find here is that the enemy now has been riding the children of Israel because he knows who they are. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, hold your head up. The enemy, he knows who you are. He heard your prayer request. He knows who you are. He heard the prophecy. He way too long. And I need you to know that there is an appointed time that God says he's going to have to let my people go. Do you hear me? There's an appointed time. Let me finish with this. The Lord said, the Bible tells us that the Lord shall sever between the cattle of, of Israel and the cattle of Egypt. And nothing shall die. Nothing. 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 Not, not one thing is going to die of that of the children of Israel. I'm finished. This is how God looks out for us. Tell your neighbor, not one thing of yours is going to die. As a matter of fact, even as I started off, look at somebody and say, mine is going to live. How do you know yours is going to live? Because God just told me mine was going to live. How do you know yours is going to live? Listen, let me explain something to you. Even when it looks like you're losing, you're really winning. Do you hear what I'm telling you? Even when it looks like you're the last one, the last shall be first, and the first shall be last. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, mine is going to live. In the middle of bondage, in the middle of captivity, in the middle of prayers being offered up, in the middle of sacrifices, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, the enemy party won. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. 
every head bowed, every believer praying. There might be someone here who has not accepted the Lord as your personal Savior. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn you nor me, but through his son Jesus we might be saved. Isaiah says, I am he that blotted out all thy transgressions and shall remember them no more. First John 1 9 and first John 1 and 9 says, if we confess our faults, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The Apostle Paul says in Romans, the 10th chapter, starting at the 8th verse, What saith it, the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth, which is the word of faith that we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, but the mouth confession is made known unto salvation. 13th verse says, Whosoever call upon the name of the Lord and his name is Jesus shall be saved there might be someone here you've heard the preaching of the gospel and it has pierced your heart amen what an opportunity you have on this evening to give your life to Jesus well there might be someone here that you desire prayer You've been having questions and you can't find answers. Amen. And you desire prayer. Amen. You may come at this time or there might be someone that you do not have a church home. Amen. And you would like to unite yourself with a Bible believing, a Bible teaching ministry. Amen. We invite you, amen, to either come in. Uh, become a disciple, amen, of Jesus as Lord Tabernacle, and if that is not your choice, amen, we have a church, a wonderful church in the Bronx, amen. Amen. wonderful church in the Bronx, amen, and we have, a, we have another wonderful church, amen, here in Stanford, Connecticut, pastor by Pastor MacArthur, amen, and you can swing over to Mount Vernon, borderline the Bronx, Amen to Apostle Carnell's church. Amen. If you live in the Connecticut area, you can swoop up to Bridgeport. Amen. And you can go to Restoration Family Christian Center. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But we will direct you. Amen. After prayer and much prayer. Amen. To the church. Amen. That will feed you and lead you. So that's two, two requests. No, not two requests. Two um things that I'm asking. Salvation, amen, or you might want to align, align yourself with a church, amen, amen. If that is you, you desire prayer, you desire salvation, amen, come, amen, come, just slip your hand, amen. If you don't want to walk by yourself, amen, we're a church that will come walk with you, amen, 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 amen. If there is none for salvation, amen, if there's none, amen, for prayer, amen. Put your hands together one more time. Stand to your feet. And let's receive Chief Apostle Hurling Field Street.
the call. Hallelujah. Fought it for a long time. Didn't want to preach because it said women weren't supposed to. I didn't say God said, I said they said. <laughs> and they still said. Hallelujah. But when I heard the word for real, for real, for real. For real, for real. I said, yes, Lord, yes. yes Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And this wonderful man named Bishop Hayward used to come to Sanford, Connecticut to see about me. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God, he said, Paul, so he said, you know, you've been called pastor then. Then he said, and you go ahead on to do what God said to yes. And when we had convocation, he would come. When I have anniversaries, he could come, he would come. Yes. If he didn't come, he would call and pray with me. Yes. And I tell you now, I got his beautiful yes. bride. Yes. Yes. Keep going on when he's still here. Yes. Hallelujah. That anointing that he had is on you, girl. Yes. Lady, go way back as a young girl. I watched her grow up yes. in Southfield Village. Where they said, Could anything good come out of Southfield Village? Yes. We came out of Southfield Village. How many Southfield Village folks in the house tonight? Glory to God. Because we said yes to his will and to his way. And we know we've been appointed, amen, amen. to do a work for God. Amen. amen. And I'm telling you, the enemy wants you to thank you. I, um, our, our elder Michelle Moore preached this morning. Oh, yes. She yes. act like somebody crazy. Oh, yes. I tell you. She act you the one. Y'all from. Yes, from yes, yes. The anointing was on that girl. Such deliverance was in this house. My God. My God. And she talked about some of the same things. Yeah. It's time to go forth and you know, forget those negative things. Yes. Right. Leave them back there. Yes. Stop going back, get there by that. Says, I remember you when. Yes. Well, what you know about me now? I remember you when too. When you were praised in a bed bug. But we prayed and we talked yeah. to, to you about Jesus. You got some wisdom. Yeah. Now, you know, folks, and you know when they want to use wisdom, Pastor? When, they, when you ask them to give. Yeah. <laughs> and when you ask them to come and go somewhere, well, you know, the Lord gave me wisdom. I, I, I got to stay home and with, with my children. And half the time, the children don't know where they are. And if they're home with the children, they in the bed room somewhere watching TV or talking to their man uh, or their woman and the children out the street doing everything they're thinking of doing. But we teach them not to do that. We teach them that, you know, don't you know God love you and God will keep you. You are a living witness that God will keep you. Your husband is there, but you look you're gorgeous. And you're being kept. Praise the Lord. Well, I thought, Pastor, you old. I said, honey, there are old folk older than me out there shaking the tail. Yeah. Wearing well, them little short dresses, them little funny looking knees. Uh -huh. yeah. 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 Funny looking knees. Yeah. 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 But I, 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 I purposely, I chose Ellen MacArthur to live holy. Yeah. And I, I desire to live, because my father is good. Yeah. Yeah. I want to please him. Yes. I want to honor him. Yes. I want to glorify him. Yes. We can do anything we want to do, but I want to live holy. Yes. When you get that desire to do it God's way yes. and know that you ain't losing nothing. I ain't lost. I ain't, listen, everybody in here from the teenagers on up to my age, the world don't owe you nothing. You done did your thing. Some of us may not did, did drugs. Some of us may not have was an alcoholic. But we were still in sin. Some was, was, was not homosexual or lesbian, but we were still in sin. So stop branding folk like that's the only kind of sin. And know that you need deliverance and you need you got delivered, you need to stay delivered. And if you're not delivered, get delivered. And stay delivered. Because the word of God will deliver and keep us. And if you're married, the 
don't you know you still need deliverance? Yes. So you can love one another and treat each other right? Amen. That's right. God wants the best for us. Yes. That's why I tell the young women, listen, let these men be men. Yes. When they walk in the door, good looking and all that, don't all y'all claim it. You don't belong to none of them. Let them belong to God first. And then stop hating on the women that's married. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Oh, she thinks she's something. That old man, she got, she got nobody don't want it but her. You must want to be talking about it. <laughs> what did you say? Anyway, thank y'all for coming. My daughter has preached the way. I, I, I look, every year I look forward to her coming. I look forward. I said, Wanda. I can the hostel, can the overseer come? She said, I don't know, Pastor, let me see. I said, tell her, please, I need her. <laughs> I really, because that, this young lady oh have my. a word in her mouth. Yes. And it's for everybody. Now, how many tonight know that God has talked to you? Yes. And God has encouraged you? Yes. And God has strengthened you? Yes. How many can tell the truth and raise your hand and say, hallelujah? Hallelujah. So we do thank God, and I thank God for every one of you. Thank you, pastors that thought it not robbery to come out. And my pastor, Apostle Barbara Cornell, for the overcoming faith. We were there the other night, Prophet Moore with the prophet. They, she have a, a service every year, the five-fold ministry. And it's always off the chain. Yes, it is. All right. And I tell you, I think I'm going to take that, uh, our prophet to the sacred board or somewhere. <laughs> for the sanctified folks. Yeah. <laughs> but that boy preached us happy. <laughs> and me, he preached and we laughed. Because you know, laughter is good for me. Yeah. Like yeah. We laughed, but, but what he was saying was so true and so yeah. profound. Yeah. It was so awesome. Yeah. Amen. To every last one of you, to my daughter, Apostle Kathleen Whitfield, amen. and the Restoration amen. family. Amen, amen. We all have done a magnificent job this week in yes. supporting and helping and doing things, and I'm grateful to all the staff. Amen. amen. To Jesus, the Lord, that's nobody, the, the cream of the crop, and ain't nobody left over. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Annette, Bishop Dave, amen. Amen. And to, and to Elder Sandy, and to everybody. The singers, the worshipers, the cooks, the cleaners, the everybody. Amen. Everybody's somebody in this ministry, and we're grateful. Amen. So our Pastor MacArthur, my friend for many years, everybody, his wife tells everybody, this is his wife sitting there. Amen. Our, our sister MacArthur. Amen. We ask her who's a pastor, she said Hurling Streeter. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she said, she said at her church, her husband's sitting right there. <laughs> they look at her and they're like, you got <laughs> she said, that's my pastor. So she, t she told a group of, a group of pastors' wives that, that they were Baptists, and they didn't, how you gonna say that she your pastor? <laughs> your husband is your pastor. She said, no, Erling Street is my pastor. My husband is my husband. <laughs> <laughs> and he just sit there and laugh at her. <laughs> but they, these are my friends. Just for him, what, I, I'm going to call her by name only because she's my friend. Yeah. But I honor her as being the lady, MacArthur, the elect lady of Universal Gospel. Mm -hmm. But anytime I go there, she's going to get in that kitchen. She's going to roll out anything and everything that I want and sit down and make sure I eat well. Amen. She does that all the time. And they say, what is wrong with you? But that's how. And you know what? She'll go to Costco. And she'll say, Pastor, I'm coming by your house because I got something for you. She'll bring me chickens and, 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 and cookies and some every kind of stuff. I said, just for anybody in this house but me. Yeah, but you can have it for a couple of days. You want to worry about cooking. <laughs> Thank you for being so kind, being so kind and being there for me, for everything she called to see about me. And, and I'm grateful for that type of friend. We have never fallen out by anything. Amen. We have always been friends. They have always been there for me, and I'm always there for them because we are friends. And you like Apostle my Apostle Carnell said, you don't have to be talking to a person every day. Every day. Sometimes it ain't good to talk to folks every day. Not the same folks anyway. Because uh -huh. then you're going to tell them your business. And then when they tell it about it, you're going to say the church told it. Yeah. Yeah. But I love y'all. Y'all are some wonderful people. 
And I tell you what, God is doing great things in the bar. Yes. 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 And God is going to do even greater things because you love the Lord. Yes. And you teach your people to praise him. Yes. I teach mine to praise him, but some of them got old like me and they think they can't. Because see, the enemy will tell you you're sick and you can't do it. He'll tell you you're too old to do it. he tell you if you do it, this is going to happen to you. But I let the devil know he's not like I'm gonna praise him. That's why I got my right mind. I got the mind of Christ. Ain't nothing gonna stop my praise. I'm gonna die praising him. That's what a husband did. He praised him until he went on to be with glory. Amen. Don't sit down and get stale and talk about you can't praise God because you got us. Them knees are stiff uh, 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 stiff because you they stiff because you ain't using them. Come on, Casa. Uh -oh. Come on, Casa. That's what I can whip her because I tell her stop by and get me because I want to go to the bar and she said pastor sometimes I just be rushing so much but you're going to have to take me to bar, the bar because I mean you know I bought Bishop Dave a lot to take me places and he will if he's here but uh, he about the only one that can drive me someplace it's our Sandy. It bring here because everybody else kind of said they can't drive in New York. Well, <laughs> I used to. <laughs> but I'm coming to the bar. Because that's my place. That's my church. That's my family. Thank you for always celebrating me. And thank you for whenever I call you, you always do everything you can to get your, your overseer here. I watch your beautiful children grow up. You have done a magnificent yes, job with them. And I'm godly proud of what you have done with your children by yourself. Because you chose to live for God. Amen. 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 And your, your people make mistakes. But, but you know what? You don't, don't keep me. I, don't, don't knock me but over the head because, see, the, the thing that they doing today, we did it then. Yes. Yes. And some of y'all still doing it today. Right. So don't kill the young people. Just encourage them to know that they are overcomers. Yes. They are more than conquerors. Amen. And that they are somebody. Yes. I don't care what, what happened, they still somebody in Christ. Yes. And all they got to do is bounce back. Amen. Amen. And we can live the life before them. Amen. I see... Um, my beautiful daughter, granddaughter, the Lanes, and her beautiful little baby back there. Yes. Tamara and her baby, amen, yes. amen. Where's my little man, Matthew? We got two babies in, in this family, so Jesus yes. the Lord, restoration, huh? Oh, he's a Matthew upset. But we still, you know, we, we love these young people. Amen. We ain't knocking them out. We tell them don't do it no more. Right. Wait till you get a husband. Amen. 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 But raise your child in God. Right. That child is somebody and you somebody. Because right. God didn't say, oops. That baby couldn't got here if it wasn't for God. Yeah. He, 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 they may came in the wrong way, but God intended for that child to be here because he got purpose for those children. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So ain't nobody knocking nobody. We love each one of you. And men, I want you to know tonight, I'm so grateful to see every man that's in this house. Yes. Every man here, you are special, you are precious, you are somebody, you are the king in this earth. Amen. And we're going to honor you as who you are. You are a great man of God. Thank you for being who you are. Thank you for coming and celebrate me. Thank you for celebrating God. Treat your leaders right. Live right. Listen, 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 men, we need you. I'm not no woman that not men. I ain't dogging no man because you're somebody special. And we need you. But we need you to walk upright. We need you to be that light for our young people. We need you to help 
us to celebrate you more. Yeah. And we got to celebrate you because yeah. you're a God man. Yeah. Thank you for who you are. You're special. You're strong. You're courageous. And you're handsome. And say that for Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're about to go home. Amen. Just for our visitors, um, we're going to ask um, immediately after the benediction that you um, go upstairs. There's something prepared for you. Just the visitors. Somebody say the visitors. Okay. Just the visitors. Um, let's stand to our feet. Oh, yes. We thank... I want them to hear us. We thank God for the cooks. Elder Tyra Lane, what's that? Um, Kelly, uh, Elder Kelly Richardson, um, yeah, Aggie, Sister Aggie, and everyone up there, we thank you. And Elder, um, Mr. Yeah. All of them, we thank you. <laughs> now unto him that is, everyone standing. Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling, present his faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power. Henceforth, now and forevermore, thank God for the blood. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Go upstairs. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, and I want the pastors and the elders to please come forward. So I'm going to get a Apostle Streeter wants all the elders and the pastors to come up front, but everyone else, please go upstairs. They'll lead you upstairs. <laughs>